आपका पेन ड्राइव यहाँ देखो ये ये दोनों एफ के होगा आपको देखना है देखना है क्या आपको ठीक है घर से देख लेते चलिए स्टार्ट सर ये वी कैन स्टार्ट Second is of uh, uh, whether you can start the product, Ravi. Yes. Okay. Yes. Namaskar. Very good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Depending from where you are attending this one. So today is the formal inauguration of IWM seven. So respected all our dignitaries, honourable Minister of Arts Sciences, Secretary Minister. Three of our sciences, Dr. Ravi Chandra ji, LOC, NOC chairman, Dr. M. Mahapatra, DGM, IMD, and PR to WMO. All our distinguished panelists from WMO secretariat, WRP, WCRP, and all our chair, international committee, Dr. Dagi sir, <coughs> Professor C. P. Chang, and all our respected delegates. so this is a formal inauguration of iwm 7 this is the seventh in series of iwm international workshop on monsoon and this every four years it is arranged and it was initially planned for to conduct last year unfortunately due to covid situation we could not arrange it and at the same time though we were expecting that this event in new delhi would be a physical one but still we could not manage it so somehow we, without further delay we are arranging this in the online mode as you know this is a very important topic monsoon the many parts large part of the globe tropical countries are affected by monsoon and monsoon associated severe weather are there monsoon associated drought floods active break cycle heavy rainfall all these are challenges that uh, we have seen in last many years though it is a historical problem actually for particularly country like india it is long more than 100 years before it was started the need of the monsoon forecast and as you, as you have progress we have improved our forecasting capability with the super computer so it is globally it has improved forecasting but but still due to the climate change and many other uh, complexity of the problem still a lot lot of challenges are there before us like localized heavy rainfall forecasting and the its impact so so these are the challenges still remain so this is a wonderful session for five days we will be discussing this problem how to improve this uh, national meter services so that they can be able to handle or uh, this uh, manage the disaster associated with uh, monsoon related event so this is a very wonderful uh, occasion for us all of us and i must thank wmo uh, secretariat and wmo particularly for believing in india to host this event and also our collaborating partner wwrp wcrp of wmo then iitm in the international monsoon project office uh, from iitm and uh, also the india med department ministry of arts and organizing this along with indian metal society so it is a many institutes and uh, experts are involved in this thing planning this event and now we have uh, prepared all this thing. it is going very smoothly and uh, without uh, much uh, wasting much time i will request our uh, director general of metallurgy dr m mahapatra sir for kindly give his welcome address over to you sir नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू रेस्पेक्टेड सेक्रेटरी मिनिस्टर ऑफ आर्ट साइंसेस डॉक्टर एम रविचंद्रन प्रोफेसर सीपी चैंग एंड डॉक्टर अजित त्यागी को चेयर्स इंटरनेशनल साइंटिफिक कमिटी और इंटरनेशनल वर्कशॉप ऑन मॉनसून सेवेंथ एडिशन 
Dr. Kony, head of WWRP Division, World Meteorological Organization. Dr. Michael Sparrow, head of WCRP Division, WMO. Dr. D.R. Patnaik, distinguished delegates from various parts of the world. <clears throat> members of the International Organizing Committee, Scientific Organizing Committee, National Organizing Committee, and Local Organizing Committee, members and fellows of Indian Meteorological Society, distinguished participants from the organizers like Indian Meteorological Department, Minister of Power Sciences, Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, and all my distinguished colleagues from the sister organizations, ladies and gentlemen, the dear students and researchers, young professionals, those who are participating in this IWM 7. At the outset, I extend warm greetings to all of you on this auspicious occasion of World Meteorological Day. This year's World Meteorological Day is being celebrated with the theme of early warning and early action. Hydrometeorological and climate information for disaster risk reduction. It is not only a mere coincidence, but it is an anticipated coincidence that IWM7 is being inaugurated on the day when we are celebrating the establishment of World Meteorological Organizations. The day signifies the unity among the meteorological, hydrometeorological, hydrological, and environmental community. The day recognizes the integration of scientific methods, approaches, understanding worldwide to address the various vagaries of weather and climate. So while you consider the vagaries in weather and climate, monsoon comes to mind of each and every person in the monsoon region. And monsoon being a planetary scale, it impacts almost entire world, starting with Japan to USA. And monsoon is not only confined to the people, monsoon has also the impact on the land mass, ocean and atmosphere, entire biosphere, cryosphere, and any sphere you consider. The monsoon has been part and parcel of life in most parts of this world, especially when you consider South Asia, Southeast Asia. While monsoon has been a boon as a major source of water, monsoon has also become an adverse factor leading to various types of disasters, especially the cyclones depressions, low pressure systems, convective systems like thunderstorms, lightning, hailstorms, squalls. Monsoon has been a vagary for worsening activities and opposition to the blue economy. It has deteriorated the socioeconomic conditions of the coastal population because of the many coastal hazards arising out of the monsoon circulations. It also caused significant damage in the past towards our marine activities. But nevertheless, the scientific community across the world has tried their best to understand the monsoon, monitor the monsoon, predict the monsoon, and warn the entire population against the vagaries of monsoon. The search for monsoon goes back to the ancient world, be it the early Vedic ages, written 3000 BC, we can find out the mention about the monsoon, mention about the rainfall, its monitoring, predictions, and early warning services, starting with thick weather. Then we came up with sound weather, yes of weather, and Atharva weather. By the time we have the Atharva weather, we could find out the means, ways and means to monitor, to measure. It was followed by continuously by the developing and evolving society in the medieval history. Also, you can find out in Indian literature the description of monsoon. Even Chanakya came up with the instrument for measurement of rain 
And the basic concept taken by Stranakya for the measurement train was a cylindrical object to measure the volume of water. And if you look at the rain gauge in the modern age, it is almost same as the concept was at that time. So therefore, the ancient knowledge has led to building up the knowledge about the monsoon. The emblem of India Meteorological Department says Aditya Jayati Bhristi, which means sun creates rain. So therefore, the people at that time understood the mechanism of rainfall and mechanism of monsoon. Coming to the medieval to recent history, even the poets like Kalidas, they have mentioned about the advance of monsoon over India. They have discussed how the monsoonal winds propagates from south to north, which we are talking of nowadays in terms of intra-seasonal oscillations. He has talked about the winds as the bearer of the clouds, which are utilizing this knowledge while deciding cloud motion vectors. So therefore, there is a continuity from the ancient knowledge towards the modern knowledge, not only in Indian literature, you can also find out the same in the Greek literature and many other literatures. But however, coming to the, the instrumentation period, we find that India was in the lead to find out the causes of monsoon after being devastated in 1866-67 by the Great Famines, while lots of people, thousands of people died in this continent. So then, that was a lot of meteorology. The great worker searched for the parameters, and that was the beginning of monsoon monitoring and forecasting. We could identify the water circulations. We could identify the southern oscillations. We could identify the various parameters which is governing the monsoon circulation of our Indian and South Asian region. And by that way, also global community came up, and there was clear understanding gradually and the day when we are discussing now, we have come up a full fresh seamless forecasting system, starting the forecast for a few hours, or now cast off to the seasonal forecast for a period of four years, four months. And we are talking up about the decadal behavior and internal behavior, and also there are predictions by certain centers in US and UK. So I must congratulate all the scientists, young and old, for this development, which has enabled the society to minimize the losses of lives and properties, and also to optimize the utilization of weather and climate information to gain in our economy. It needless to mention that there is a huge improvement in economy because of the improvement in monsoon forecasting, especially in India. The bad monsoon can affect up to 5% of the GDP. 70 to 90% of rainfall in India depends upon monsoon rainfall, total rainfall of the country in a year is attributed to 70 to 90% by the monsoon. And hence, monsoon is considered as life. At the same time, monsoon is not limited only to agriculture. It also affects the water bodies. It affects the industries. It affects the community activities. It affects the individual activities. It, come, it affects all types of socioeconomic activities in the region. So therefore, all the festivals, all the activities in the society in India and abroad you will find are tuned and organized with the activity of monsoon. The seasons are named after monsoon, the festivals are named after monsoons, and the religion also follows the monsoon. However, with all these developments, when we have got a seamless forecasting system and spatial and temporal scale, but there are still gaps and lack of understanding with respect to the oceanic processes because this region, especially South Asia, Southeast Asia, and Middle East, if you consider, is a data sparse region being, being surrounded by the great Himalayas to the north and the Bay of Bengal, Arabian Sea, and Indian Ocean to the east, west, and to the south. At the same time, many of the parameters governing the monsoon are well placed far away from this region, be in Atlantic or be in South Indian Ocean or be in Pacific or somewhere else, or be in polar region. I think our secretary is here. So there are certain connectivity with the polar cryosphere and also the activity of monsoon. I hope the way in which this international workshop has been planned, though delayed by one year, 
will be helpful for each of us to identify the gap areas and will help us to have a better understanding through this conference and it will help to plan for the future better monitoring, forecasting, and warning services. At the same time, this international workshop on monsoon will help each of us to build the capacity. The knowledge transfer from the older generation to the younger generation, especially the young professionals, researchers, and scientists will be a key output or outcome from this IWM7. It is heartening to note that in spite of the threat due to COVID-19, there has been a large large contribution, about 200 presentations, including invited oral and short oral, will be there during this five days workshop. I hope all of you will appreciate the difficulties in the presence of COVID-19 in organizing this uh, online workshop. There will be certain difficulties because of this time zone management. Some people in some way will be facing difficulties. I beg pardon from all of you for not being able to arrange physically, though we tried our best for last one year to have this conference physically at New Delhi. Once again, I extend a warm welcome to all of you to this August workshop on International Workshop of Monsoon, seventh edition, and I am hopeful it will be a great success with the presence of all the distinguished scientists and researchers in this program. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, highlighting the ancient knowledge of monsoon and, and also the gap area and that uh, that your uh, talk or points uh, will be very much discussed in the due course. Thank you very much, sir. Now, may I now request our two co-chairs of International Scientific Committee, Professor C.P. Cheng and then Dr. Ajit Tagi to give uh, their remarks about the brief report of the IMPO activity and the IWM7. Over to you, sir. So we, we are sharing your PPT, Professor Chang, sir. Are you okay? Yes, I'm sorry, I was muted. Uh, I'll try to uh, share screen. If I fail, then maybe you can play my PowerPoint. Okay, 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 please, and, please try, please try. Uh, so I'll... Screen uh, I have launched the share screen, but does it? I don't know whether it's still. It's not sharing. It is sharing. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, I will briefly review uh, the current state uh, and the future outlook of uh, monsoon research. And I was given uh, assigned this task uh, last month in the open in the lunch event of the International Monsoon Project Office. Here, I'm going to make a very brief uh, uh, summary uh, of this review. This is for spanning all time skills of monsoon research. <clears throat> and starting from the shortest uh, time scale, the meso scale, and then into synoptic scale. And there are the common features uh, in different monsoon regions, including the uh, meso scale convective systems, topography, low level jet, diurnal cycle, and so forth. Those are all important uh, topics for research, but there are uh, special uh, regional characteristics uh, like Indian monsoon, monsoon depression would be an important uh, special uh, system. And in Africa monsoon, we have easter waves, which could become uh, tropical, which could induce tropical cyclone genesis. And then there are also winter monsoon in Southeast Asia, maritime continent, where cold surges uh, can uh, influence heavy rainfall. And these uh, smaller scale and meso scale weather systems uh, are actually a focus of the, uh, the working group for tropical meteorological research uh, in the past. Uh, here I'm going to show that in fact, IWM, the one that we're holding now is IWM7, uh, uh, is just one part of the IWM families. Uh, starting in 2008, when the working group was uh, part, become part of the World Weather Research Program, uh, 
prior to that was the tropical meteorological research program. Actually, there's more climate. But starting 2008, uh, the focus uh, is shifting to weather. So we have a series of uh, <clears throat> workshops on monsoon heavy rainfall, that's MHR means, and as indicated, in fact, the third one was held uh, in Delhi. And here is the abstract bottom on the lower left. The last one was in Shenzhen. And this series of uh, monsoon heavy rainfall uh, workshop uh, end up with uh, the launch of a major field program uh, oh, I'll just mention in addition, we have workshop on climate change that was uh, two years ago. And the mesoscale uh, field experiment is part of uh, the WWRP uh, RDP research and development project. And that's the Thousand China Monsoon experiment, uh, which is a pretty comprehensive uh, project that includes field observations, physical stud mechanism studies, and model studies, both in terms of interior dynamics, environmental conditions, and forecast. They have a lot of uh, good results and output, uh, including the improving of uh, QPF skills. And above the uh, meso scale and synopsis will be the intra-seasonal scale, where the predictability is mainly from MGO and uh, its teleconnections. Uh, global models used to have a lot of problems uh, uh, with uh, simulating MGO, but there has been tremendous advancement so that models are now performed uh, reasonably well, such as the GFD or SPEAR model uh, that <coughs> can now hand, have good uh, forecast skill and also good simulation of teleconnection for fast propagating and jumping MGO, but for the slower propagating and the standing MGO, they still have problems either in skill or teleconnection. And for future studies to solve those problems, uh, uh, which is mainly, uh, there are two factors identified. One is the maritime continent barrier effect. The other one is the interaction with the stratospheric quasi bionic oscillation. Above the uh, intra-seasonal scale would be the seasonal scale or the annual cycles. And here it is well known that there exists uh, a negative correlation between ENSO and the India monsoon rainfall. Uh, but uh, I guess in the last uh, 30, maybe 40 years, 50 years, uh, it was realized that uh, this negative correlation changes with time. So it declines uh, sometime uh, in late uh, 20th century, then it uh, recovers. Uh, <clears throat> some recent studies shows that this may be due to the effect of uh, sea surface temperature anomalies in the tropics. Professor Bing Wan and his team uh, did uh, some studies and that shows this uh, correlation actually exists not just over India monsoon, but over the entire Asia region. So they would call this uh, Asia monsoon and so relationship as shown in the upper left diagram here. Uh, the brown are the negative and the green are the positive, which depends on whether it's summer or winter. Monsoon. But uh, they, uh, they call this the relationship robust because the correlation exists in a lot of places and a lot of time. However, it's non stationary because it's location varying. And in each location, uh, say summer monsoon, it could be uh, Ju July, August, September having the highest correlation, or it could be May, June, July. And uh, it's winter uh, season varying. It's also duration varying, whether the correlation exists for two months or three months and so forth. And on the right hand side, we have a 500 year, uh, 544 years uh, chart showing these fluctuations. And we can see that uh, in the late, uh, most recent uh, maritime continent in India and Northern China, uh, the correlation all increases. And the highest correlation is maritime continent just because Seasonal forecast, seasonal uh, predictability is mainly uh, depending on ENSO, and ENSO has this displacement of the workers' circulation that affects maritime continent more. more. Uh, however, it turned out that in part of the maritime continent, uh, that is the western part, as indicated here, uh, the correlation is pretty bad, so that the climate uh, is called COF, climate. Uh, 
outlook COF, climate outlook forum of Southeast Asia, uh, was uh, very unsuccessful in this region through several years. And uh, in fact, in IWM uh, six in Singapore last time, some of us were uh, interested in discussing that and came up with some ideas about uh, the reason of that is not that ENSO has uh, not no effect in here, but ENSO has a lot of effect here. It has two effects. One is the displacement of walker cell, but then there's another one that influences low level circulation, such that the two offset each other, ending up with uh, very difficult prediction. So this is a, the reason I show this is because this is an example that uh, global climate modelers uh, that's on the climate research uh, needs a uh, mesoscale weather researchers uh, because in fact uh, here is due to the mesoscale terrain. So there need to be the cooperation between WCRP and WWRP. Finally, uh, on the longest uh, time scale will be the climate change scale. And we had this uh, workshop uh, in Zhuhai uh, late uh, just before the pandemic hit. And there's a major report published in BAMS. And the summary of that is actually just show up in January issue of the printed version or digital version of BANS just this year. So original paper 2021, the shorted version 2022. And there are a lot of results. I just simply touch on a few that uh, <clears throat> both for past and also for future, uh, there's a, a region, we all know that extreme rainfall uh, would be more frequent and more intense, but there is uh, significant regional decadal variations. Also, this increase of extreme rainfall uh, in some places are uh, partly or all due to urbanization effect. And in the future, uh, land monsoon rainfall uh, uh, also uh, varies according to uh, different regions like South Asia, East Asia, and North Africa, Northern Africa monsoon. We expect uh, increase of mean rainfall, but uh, North American monsoon we expect decreasing, and Southern Hemisphere we expect little change. And <clears throat> for future challenges, uh, model biases and parameterization and so forth, uh, one uh, point is that the global model does not seem to be able to uh, simulate extreme rainfall more than one meter per day. The most recent CME6 projected uh, land, mon land monsoon rainfall is 50% larger than the CME5, so that is uh, great news. However, the range of this change also is 50% larger, so that is not so great a news. The most important point, the most crucial challenge seems to be the prediction of internal modes of variability, namely uh, internal mode versus uh, radiative forcing. Um, this, if this cannot be improved, then there remains to be a lot of uncertainties in the projections. Thank you. That's all my talk. Thank you, Professor Chen, for highlighting the science part of the monsoon and how the challenges uh, in the model prediction as also feature what are the challenges is expected due to the climate change. Thank you very much. Sir. Now, may I request no. Professor Tagi, sir, to kindly share the, his view? Dr. Ravi Chandran, Secretary, Ministry of Earth Sciences, Chairman, International Organizing Committee and National Organizing Committee. Dr. Matunjay Mahapatra, Director General of India Meteorological Department and PR of India with WMO. Estel, Head of WWRP. Michael Sparrow, Head of WCRP. Professor C.P. Chang, Dr. Patnaik, esteemed delegates and distinguished scientists and participants. It's a great honor and privilege to present the planning of IWM-7. Professor Cheng has covered the scientific advancements made through the series of IWMs con conducted in last 30, 35 years. And uh, it's, it's transfer of technology from the research to the forecasters, which ha has been brought out. The scales which have been covered from mesoscale to climate 
and improvements in the forecast which have taken place is really com commendable and IWM has played a signif significant role in that. I'd also like to thank on behalf of WGTMR uh, to the Government of India, Ministry of Earth Sciences for extending wholehearted support and making this workshop a great success in terms of participation across the different time zones and across different domains. So this is really commendable despite of COVID and the additional attraction of this particular series of the IWM of this year had been to organize a very successful international workshop, training workshop on S2S. And so these are the two very important activities which have been made possible despite of the challenges of the COVID. And this wouldn't have been possible without the support of Ministry of Earth Sciences, India Meteorological Department, Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, and IMPO. So thanks to the directors of these institutions and the head of IMPO, Dr. Kohli, Dr. Krishnan, Director IITM, and of course, the Director General, Dr. Mahapatra, whose entire team as LOC has put the things to together and managing this show with different time zones in ex excellent manner. Science has been covered, so let me go through the, the planning aspect of this workshop and how we are managing uh, the different time zones, uh, thanks to the, I think, planning done by the LOC. Uh, and so, Patnaik, would you put my presentation? Yes, 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 we are sharing, sir. See, unlike uh, routine uh, scientific workshop seminars, the IWM was conceived with, with the specific objectives. The two key objectives were that it was to provide a platform for the researchers and forecasters. Next slide, please. to discuss recent advances and current issues covering all time scales, the meso scale to the climate that are relevant to the forecast of high impact weather in the monsoon regions around the world, focusing on the societal benefits. So th this is the one of the key aspect of this. And the next one is to provide training. Next slide. This a means of transfer of new science and technology to the national meteorological and hydrological services in the monsoon region through a training workshop that offers short courses on developing countries NMHS forecasts sponsored by the WMO. And I'm happy to say that despite of constraints, we have been to a great degree able to achieve this objective in IWM 7. IWM 7 is brought out by Professor C.P. Cheng is a major quadriennial workshop series of WMO under its WWRP. And now, since we are talking of seamless from weather to the climate, it works closely with the programs of WCRP and sister programs of WWRP, along with host of the scientific uh, agencies of the various national met and meteorological hydrological services. So this is uh, uh, excellent scientific teamwork and the research of which positively helps the society in a great way. Next. As brought out of by Professor Chang, uh, it started, the first IWM was held in Bali, Indonesia in 1997. And thereafter, a series of these have been regularly being held. Second one in Delhi, almost the same dates, 23rd to 26th March of 2000, followed by uh, Hangzhou, uh, China in 2004, and next two uh, uh, international workshops also were held in China, followed by IWM6 in Singapore last, last held in 13 to 17 November 2017. As brought out, this IWM7 was to be held from 8th to 12th March in 2021, but because of COVID, we wanted this to have be a physical and we requested for the postponement by one year and we were see, quite hopeful that things will improve, but considering the conditions, uh, we went for a hybrid. Two of the 
a virtual workshop, but uh, as brought out by Dr. Mahapatra, there has been a very good response uh, from all senior scientists to the younger scientists. Uh, we have uh, invited speakers thanks to the International Scientific Committee with co-chairs being Professor CP. We have uh, eminent 38 invited speakers uh, covering all uh, domains of, of the monsoon research. And uh, we have uh, researchers, younger researchers who will be making contribute oral presentations and the short presentations and the posters. So entire spectrum of scientists from senior scientists to the young researchers have been taken care of in this IWM7. Next please. So broad thematic areas being covered in this IWM7 are the regional monsoons. We had six invited talks covered under this yesterday. Sub-seasonal to seasonal predictions, which has been uh, the focus, and we'll have two technical sessions on this. Modeling of monsoon processes, climate change and monsoon, high impact monsoon weather, field experiments and observation campaigns. We had a presentation made in the, in the morning session. Monsoon prediction for societal benefits and the new technologies. Next, please. So as uh, mentioned that with the under the gu guidance of WGTMR co-chairs, co uh, Professor Beng Zhou and Yukari, in consultation with the DGM and the WWRP Secretariat, Steel and the ISC Chairman Chris Davis, International Organizing Committee was constituted with Dr. M. Ravichandra, Secretary MOS as the chair, and we had members representing all international scientific programs and key national meteorological and hydrological services. As brought out that International Scientific Committee was the, has been the backbone uh, for organizing the scientific content of the workshop, and we were able to see request and we are thankful to all our invited speakers who have readily agreed, and despite of different time zones, and uh, are making their presentations, and have agreed to also contribute uh, to the publication. Of course, if this would not have been happened without the support of the National Organizing Committee and the Local Organizing Committee, and uh, I, I would like to appreciate and convey thanks to each each one of them. You will be surprised to know that even these web broadcasts and are being done in house. Not so. This is really commendable uh, achievement uh, to manage such workshops in the different time zones so efficiently. So compliments and thanks to uh, members of the local organizing committee. Uh, of course, uh, coordinator Dr. Patnaik is playing a very key role under the guidance of the director general. And similarly, international workshop training workshop was conducted by under the guidance of director IITM with the INPOs. So this is really an excellent teamwork which has made this happen. Thank you. Next. Okay, so we have three important activities under this IWM7 as mentioned, the International Online S2S Training Workshop. See, typically earlier on physical training workshop used to be three days, half, day sessions in parallel sessions, but this time because of virtual facilities, it was very elaborately planned with all S2S experts providing theoretical and practical sessions to 100 odd participants. So this was very good. I think I must say one of the success of IWM7. And then the main workshop, which is now taking place. And of course, uh, it will be followed by a special issue of MOSOM, the quarterly general, where all peer reviewed papers will be published. Next. So, this is what uh, the training workshop is an important component. We organized it from 1st to 12th November 2021. Uh, more than 100 registrations of participants from National Meteorological and Hydrological Services and also from academic institutions around the world. A pre workshop orientation course was done to familiarize with the data, tools, and other procedures of training uh, workshops to make the training really effective. And uh, of course, the IITM and IMQ played a key role in supporting this particular organization. Next. Uh, the organizing committee also has brought out uh, abstract booklet uh, of 
e copy of this will be available on on IWM website and it will be released by uh, our secretary and chairman IOC in today's function. So this is another important part that uh, has been achieved. Next. Okay, so the technical program already it's been shared with you. It, it covers five days starting from initially the workshop was supposed to be 23rd to 26th, but because of um, more number of invited speakers we were able to manage. So we plan advance it by one day and we are having morning session, morning three to six UTC and evening uh, the current one, 12.30 to 15.50. Total of nine sessions will be there, uh, 38 invited talks uh, and to, there are nine technical sessions, 72 oral presentation and 68 short oral come posters presentations will be there. Okay, so these are the uh, invited talks, and these are the oral presentations uh, which which will be covered. Uh, there are really multiple three planned and being, I see, managed very well by the chairs. And this is the program overview, which is I'm sure all of you must have gone through. So that is what as brought out by CP. The the all the earlier IWMs have been followed by by a global monsoon system. Um, um series of the booklets um, uh, which have been widely received and uh, this time uh, we are going to bring out a special issue of quarterly journal of meteorology and hydrology that is mosam it will have a peer reviewed papers and uh, our co-chairs of the wgtmr has already requested invited speakers uh, to to submit the papers so with this uh, once again my thanks to the the organizing support provided by the Ministry of Earth Sciences, uh, the India Med Department, IITM, other institutions. Uh, thank you. Jai. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Taki sir, for uh, explaining the details about the planning, etc., of the IWM7 and how much work has gone behind this planning. Thank you very much, sir. So, may I now request uh, our head at WWRP division? Of WMO, Dr. Estina D. Coney, please. Very much. Dear Dr. Moapatra, Professor Chang, Dr. Tiyadi, and Dr. Patanik, and distinguished guests, I'm very honored to say a few words on behalf of the World Weather Research Program regarding monsoon research and its significance to WWRP. First of all, as the previous speakers, I would like to thank everybody who was involved in the organization of this workshop and the training workshop that was held last year. The International Monsoons Project Office, hosted by the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, was recently established and launched, and in collaboration with the World Weather Research Program and the World Weather Climate Research Program. And this Seventh International Monsoons Workshop is the very first activity officially under this new umbrella. The WWRP promotes international and interdisciplinary research for more accurate and reliable forecasts from minutes to seasons to enhance society's resilience. Monsoon systems that have a huge impact economically as well as socially and are accompanied by high impact weather events, which is both beneficial and hazardous, link meteorology, climatology, hydrology, agriculture, and water resource management on all time scales. And this information is much needed by the decision makers for early warnings and early actions. For the WWRP, the value cycle approach is extremely important. We need to cross the necessary bridges to our stakeholders by engaging them in the design of our projects, working with them during the projects and co-evaluating the provided products with them. And this needs to feed back into redesign and adjustment to keep us moving forward. This is why a workshop like this one is really important to establish this much needed dialogue between scientists and users of monsoon information. WWRP is busy developing a new implementation plan from 2024 to 2027, and research on monsoon systems will definitely be important beyond 2024 through the links with our Tropical Meteorological Research Working Group and related projects. 
Collaboration with the WCRP and the Monsoons Office in India is crucial to ensure the efficiency in our efforts to reach our common goals. This is a wonderful opportunity to discuss the developments in monsoon modeling, monsoon prediction on all timescales, new technologies and tools, results from field experiments, and the application of monsoon prediction capabilities to benefit society. We look forward to this event, formally inaugurated on World Med Day 2022, and the outcomes of this workshop. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Estelle, for uh, highlighting how the WWRP is actively working for this monsoon and also the facilitating this collaboration and bigger research. Thank you very much. So may I now request our WCRP head from WMO, Dr. Michael Sparrow, to give his view. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, or good evening, or good morning, depending on your time of day. First of all, I'd like to thank you, our kind hosts, for inviting me to say a few words on behalf of the World Climate Research Programme. As has already been shown so well by our esteemed colleagues today, the monsoons are global phenomena of particular importance to uh, the Asia, Australian, African and American regions. In order to fully understand and predict the monsoon systems, we need scientists from a variety of disciplines and different countries to work together with a common aim. As Estelle has already mentioned, this is why uh, the World Climate Research Program and the World Weather Research Program launched the International Monsoons Project Office to consolidate monsoon research under both programs. The IMPO is hosted and kindly supported by the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology in Pune and is a global hub of monsoons research and will continue to expand um, and bring in more partners and uh, you know, becoming a real hub and focus for global monsoons research in the future. WCA itself, WCRP itself, tackles monsoon research on a number of fronts. For example, a long-standing monsoons panel, co-led by our CLIVAR, which is Climate and Oceans, and GWEX, our Global Energy and Water Cycle, Water Exchanges Core Projects, explores the global view of monsoons activities, enabling knowledge and best practice to be shared between the various monsoon regions. However, monsoons research cuts across many of our activities. For example, we coordinate a global monsoons model into comparison project and an S2S, subseason of the seasonal subproject on monsoons. Earlier this month, we also held a high profile seminar on monsoon systems, tipping elements, irreversibility and abrupt change, jointly with the Earth Commission and Future Earth's AIMS project. As WCRP moves ahead with implementing its new strategic plan and with a new structure in place, we will continue to focus on monsoons research, but working even more closely with our partners, both international and national. So I'd just like to finish by thanking you all, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, would like to wish you a successful and scientifically interesting worship, workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Spire, for highlighting how this WCRP is working for the improvement of monsoon forecast to S2S to S2, many projects are there. So thank you very much. So now we have an agenda that, uh, as you know, the Indian Med Society recognizes uh, the scientists in the field of uh, monsoon research. So now we have a role here that uh, the Sir Gilbert Walker Award. So I will now uh, just uh, read the thing. Okay, so the Indian Metallurgical Society is in its endeavor to recognize an outstanding and pioneering contribution in the field of metallurgy and related area has instituted the Sir Gilbert Walker Gold Medal. This award is to honor lifetime contributions towards discovery of new phenomena, understanding of the atmospheric and other processes, and developing metallurgical services for societal benefits. Sir Gilbert Walker Gold Medal is awarded for the scientific contributions in the field of monsoon meteorology, including long range forecasting of monsoon, forecasting of monsoon system, including tropical cyclone, and for overall contribution to the development of metallurgy in India. Professor Dr. P. V. Joseph, born on 29th December 1932 in Kerala, the southern state of India, did his master degree in physics in 1953 from the University of Madras. Joined the Indian Department in 1957 at Kolaba and Alibag Observatory, Bombay, where he did data collection and research in geomagnetism for five years. During 1962-63, he was trained in meteorology and weather prediction. For the subsequent 16 years, he worked in the Operational Weather Forecasting Center of IMD, 
particularly in aviation meteorology and cyclone warning. During 1980 to 1989, he was director of the WMO Regional Metallurgical Training Center of IMD at Pune. In 1983, he obtained PhD degree in physics from University of Pune for research on monsoon variability. He has also contributed in the field of academics. Taking voluntary retirement from IMD in 1989, Dr. Joseph took up various assignments in India and USA as visiting scientist. Professor Joseph was also UGC visiting professor, emeritus professor of the Department of Atmospheric Science of the Cochin University of Science and Technology, where he did teaching of MSc and MTech course and research on the atmospheric and ocean system in collaboration with the faculty and PhD students. He has got many research and publications. He had done original research for more than five decades in tropical meteorology, monsoon, cyclone, and thunderstorm, climate change, and ocean atmospheric interaction. Professor Joseph discovered a low level jet stream in monsoon and found that its axis had different latitudinal positions over India in the active and break phases of monsoon. His research work on instability in the ocean atmosphere system, a negative feedback that produces epochs like the three decades from 1961 to 1990 of frequent Indian monsoon drought and not moving severe cyclones in the Bay of Bengal. He has published more than 70 research papers in reported national and international journals. He has got many awards and recognitions because of his outstanding contribution. In recognition to his contribution, he has been awarded with many prestigious awards such as the Hariyam Ashram Prerit, Dr. Bikram Sarabhai Research Award in 1978. In 2012, he was the recipient of the Swedish Science Puraskaram and also of felicitation of the Foundation Day of India Med Department. Swedish Science Puraskaram National Award for Excellence in Atmospheric Science and Technology by Ministry of Earth Sciences in 2016. Professor Joseph was conferred upon the Lifetime Achievement Award of the Indian Medical Society in 2016. In recognition of his outstanding contribution to monsoon meteorology, the Indian Meteorological Society is privileged to confer upon Professor Dr. P. V. Joseph the Sir Gilbert Walker Gold Medal of the Indian Medical Society for the year 2019-2020 on this day of 23rd March 2022. IMS congratulates Professor P. V. Joseph for this professional accomplishment. Thank you. Professor Joseph, sir, if he's online, then we can join. Namaskar, sir. Ask me to speak. So just hi, yeah. Just speak something. No. Namaste, Joseph, sir. Namaskar. I will take a photograph. Okay, so. so heartiest congratulations, uh, Dr. P. V. Joseph Saab, on behalf of uh, all scientific community here in the International Hours of Monsoon, and also on behalf of Minister of Sciences, Indian Meteorological Department, all sister organizations, and Indian Meteorological Society. Thank you very much for accepting the Sir Gilbert Walker Award. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So we will go to the next item. As one minute. Uh, one minute. The secretary wants to speak. Yeah, yes, sir. Please, please, sir. Just I convey the same thing. Congratulations, sir. That's thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. So now we'll move to the next item. As uh, Dr. Tyagi sir was telling that uh, yeah, we are also we have brought out a uh, abstract books because two, more than uh, around two hundred abstracts were received, including invited speaker, oral, and this thing. So now may I request our secretary, MOS, Dr. Ravi Chandan, sir and also the chairman of NOC and IOC to kindly release the abstract book. Also, our DGM sir has a copy and I have also a copy. We can show this one, uh, releasing the book.
and our team can also play a small just one minute video of one this minute. video Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, releasing the abstract book. Yeah, so. Okay, so now may I request our uh, secretary MOS, Dr. M. Ravjandan, sir, and also he the chairman of NOC and International Organizing Committee to kindly address uh, on this occasion. Thank you, sir. Respected Professor Joseph Sir, Dr. Mahabhatra, DGIMD and PR of India with the WMO, Dr. Michael Sparrow, Head WGRP Division of WMO, Dr. Kony, Head WWRP Division of WMO, Professor C.P. Chang and Dr. Ajit Tiagi, Co-Chairs of International Scientific Committee of IWM7, Dr. Patnai, Coordinator of IW7, distinguished chairpersons of various sessions, invited speakers, participants, a very good, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. On behalf of the Ministry of Earth Sciences and Government of India, I welcome you all for the 7th WMO International Workshop on Monsoon. Greetings to all on this WMO World Meteorological Day on this year theme early warning, early action is more up for this year's workshop. As you all know that how important is the monsoon for India? You know that we are just with the two monsoons, southwest and northeast. It is imperative that we need to predict the monsoon well in all time scales, especially short and medium range. Of course, for improving the forecast, we need to have a better observations. We need both in situ, like uh, automatic weather stations or radio sonde, and also remote sensing like radars and satellites are very imperative. Of course, observations are required for both understanding and enhancing knowledge, and also to assimilate into the models for better initialization. For understanding, we need to have a high frequency observation for various parameters so that we can improve the model physics parameters in scheme and so on. Obviously, for better initialization, we need to have more observation for various types, and hence we need to augment more and more number of in-situ observations, surface as well as in the upper air for the better monsoon forecast and understanding. Of course, by increasing the observations, we can certainly improve our forecast in some degree, the next one to improve the forecast is to improve the model physics. And the other area to improve the forecast is we need to concentrate on the resolution of the model by augmenting more number of, uh, maybe more required capacity of HPC. And also to reduce the uncertainty, we may also need to have more number of, more ensemble members. And also again, we need for more HPC for that. So obviously these observations, model physics, resolution, HPC, and all will contribute to improve the forecast. And the next important factor in the forecast of monsoon when we are talking about the important element is the ocean. So the same thing, observations, understanding, improvement in model and prediction, all these things will hold good for the ocean side too. Of course, the ocean side, the mixed layer parameters is scheme is very important, especially in our regions, apart from resolution and other things. So the coupled model is essential for our 
forecast monsoon when we talk about uh, monsoon forecast. If you see that if, if the forecast is more than a week or two, then always we know that ocean plays a very critical role. So without ocean, we cannot think of prediction beyond some one or two weeks. Of course, we need to have a, a teleconnections or local versus remote forcings, or somebody has pointed out the internal dynamics or the external forcings is another important factor that we need to explore for better predictability. Also, we need to put more effort on how the monsoon will change under global warming scenario, how the, as the time progresses, how the extreme rainfall and other things changes we need to understand. Slowly, I think we also need to incorporate the chemistry in the atmospheric model and also biogeochemistry in the ocean model and then couple them in the physical model so that for better understanding and the forecast. So considering all these points, the government of India has initiated the monsoon mission. Of course, there are lot, already two phases have been uh, over and then all the, both the phases, it has given very good understanding, knowledge uh, has been provided by this monsoon mission. And also it has yielded some of the important component or improving the operational weather forecast. So due to this monsoon mission, India could also start the dynamical prediction system from the conventional statistical and other models. Now we are, it is an evolving process and we need to improve year by year. Of course, for that collaboration is the key for improving both the knowledge as well as operational utility. So both national as well as international collaboration is important. In that aspect, I think this workshop is very, very important. Of course, the knowledge, whatever we are gathering, that immediately we need to put it into the model for better predictability so that we can translate science to services for the benefit of society. That was the aim of this year's, of course, the WMO theme. Of course, this workshop definitely will pave way for many new knowledge as well as collaboration. And I thank you all for joining this workshop. And I'm sure this, this workshop will be a grand success. Thank you, Ananda. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your encouraging words. And definitely this workshop will help much collaboration and also interaction among the different scientists from different parts of the globe will help to further strengthen the monsoon research. Thank you very much, sir. So now we have a video recorded message from our respected uh, Secretary General of uh, WMO. So I will request our team to kindly play this message. Your Excellency, Dr. Uh, Ravi Chandran, Secretary Ministry of uh, Earth Sciences, uh, Chairman International Organization, Organizing Committee. Dr. Mohapatra, Director General of Mythology India, Mythological Department, and Permanent Representative of India with WMO. Professor Chang, uh, Dr. Tiagi, Co-Chairs, International Scientific uh, Committee. Dr. Patainak, uh, Secretary of Indian Meteorology Society and Coordinator of National Organizing Committee of this event. Dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the World Meteorological Organization on, and uh, on my own behalf, uh, I would like to express uh, WMO's appreciation to address the seventh international workshop on monsoons. I would like to thank the government of India, in, especially Ministry of Earth Sciences and the India Meteorological Department uh, for hosting this online scientific event. It speaks of importance uh, that India assigns uh, to the vital climatic and environmental challenges that the international community faces today. Climate and environment related challenges have long been everyday issues to India. It ranks uh, seventh uh, in the last United Nations Global Climate Risk Index and in 2017, it, it, was, it was the uh, second most affected country in terms of casualties related to extreme weather. India is affected uh, by yearly monsoon season, typically lasting from June to early September. As you may recall, in, in 2019, the monsoon conditions continued uh, a month longer than normal, with the rain surplus uh, causing severe hardship uh, 
to the country's population with large uh, death toll and multi-million people affected and displaced and huge economic loss. I would like to congratulate the Indian government for taking several initiatives to tackle these climate and natural hazard issues. India is one of the few leaders in the implementation of the Paris Agreement on climate change. It has a national clean air program to combat air pollution because you are facing one of the most uh, uh, difficult uh, air quality problems worldwide. You are a founding member of the International Solar Alliance and has been notable targets related to solar power, power energy. The Indian government has initiated several flagship projects on environment, clean India, clean Gangstam, smart cities mission, to name a few. It is also in the forefront uh, in weather and climate uh, research. Back to monsoons, uh, true, too much rainfall can severely impact people's uh, lives. Uh, but let us uh, not forget that farmers, not only in India, but also in countries in monsoon regions, uh, rely on the wet summer months uh, to grow crops. The variations in the amount of monsoon rainfall have implications for agriculture and the economy. During the years uh, when there is less rainfall than usual, crops either die in the fields or cannot be planted at all. We are all aware that countries with the monsoon climate uh, are prone to floods and drought, both events uh, hazardous to health. Each year before the advent of the mon summer monsoon season, Indian hospitals prepare for, for possible high numbers of uh, patients with cholera, dengue, chikungunya, malaria, eye and stomach infections. In winter, when clouds uh, seldom give shade and the dry land uh, surface can't cool by evaporation, heat waves are, are to watch for. In the sub-Saharan Africa, the number of meningitis uh, cases drops uh, with the coming of the first monsoon rains. Since this workshop is dedicated to advancing the prediction of monsoons with societal benefit, uh, permit me to recall that the World Meteorological Organization have been fully supporting the monsoon, monsoon workshop series for almost two decades now. In 1997, WMO organized the first uh, international workshop uh, on monsoons spearheaded by WMO's monsoon pa panel in Bali, Indonesia. That was the start of a quadrennial workshop series, which is to provide a forum for researchers and forecasters to discuss uh, recent advances and current issues involving monsoons as key features of Earth, Earth system phenomena covering weather, weather to climate uh, timescales uh, affecting large populations around the world. This uh, workshop series has led to establishment of a number of international monsoon-related field campaigns through the years. Most notable of these field projects uh, are the 2004 North American monsoon experiment, uh, the 2006 uh, African monsoon multidisciplinary analysis or AMMA for short and ongoing South China monsoon rainfall experiment. It is all, all also worth noting that the workshop series resulted in the publication of book series uh, on monsoons uh, currently used uh, either as textbooks or valuable reference material on monsoon in several universities, weather services and schools of learning. The said book series documents the advances in, in the understanding and prediction of monsoon systems as discussed uh, in the international workshop on monsoons and reviewed uh, by experts uh, from the global monsoon community. The fourth book in the series, uh, The Multiscale Global Monsoon System, was uh, published in, in 2020. Allow me to thank and congratulate the editors of the book, renowned uh, monsoon experts, uh, ably led by professors uh, Chang and uh, Johnson. Furthermore, WMO's dedication on the advancement of uh, monsoon science uh, paved the way for the establishment uh, of the International Monsoon Project Office this year. Hosted by the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology and Indi Indian Meteorological Society. 
The IMPO is uh, India's contribution to global monsoon research coordination under the auspices of WMO's World Weather Research Program and, uh, and the WMO IOC UNESCO IEC World Climate Research Program. In addition to this, uh, its principal focus on monsoons, I have noted that the uh, seventh uh, in the IM, I, 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 uh, WM series is also being held to promote uh, partnerships uh, in climate and environment to address the impact of uh, monsoons as part of the societal challenges. It is indeed very important to convene multidisciplinary experts and scientists in tackling the monsoon issue to inform society, especially the political and econ economic policy makers, on the multitude of uh, benefits uh, to be derived from applied research in the areas of climate and environment, as well as on the issue of global climate change. Let me emphasize again the importance uh, of the monsoon system in the circulation of the atmosphere. They play vital and diversified, uh, uh, di diversified roles in the evolution of weather and climate systems. The global monsoon systems uh, are defining feature of the Earth's uh, climate and a forced response uh, of the coupled climate system to the annual cycle of solar insulation. Variability of the monsoon systems can result in profound effects on climate and climate change in various regions of the globe. Monsoons are, are, are the very important systems that are closely associated with the genesis of tropical cyclones, which are the most de devastating hazard with hydrometeorological nature. Onset of the monsoons will shift into tropical conversion zones, uh, uh, which is a uh, hotbed uh, to incubate uh, embryos uh, to develop uh, into tropical cyclones. Majority of tropical cyclones are generated within the monsoon system, system's environment. This is especially so in Asia and, and the Pacific. Uh, therefore, monsoon and tropical cyclone are just like uh, two sides of the coin. Monsoon rainfall has profound economic and societal impacts for many parts of the Earth system and more than two-thirds of the global population. The variation in the amount of monsoon rain can indeed be disastrous when it goes to extremes. But let us not forget that the monsoon rains are also beneficial. Aside from being much needed in agricultural activities, the rains are harnessed uh, as hydropower filling up reservoirs and creating 25% of uh, India's uh, electricity. Therefore, increased knowledge, uh, improved understanding and well-developed forecasting techniques of, of monsoon systems will be a vital contribution to, to well management of water resource. Better mitigation and prevention of meteorological disasters, thus well-being of the vast population. Continued uh, climate change and urbanization over the past century has already caused significant uh, rise in the intensity and fre frequency of extremes, extreme rainfall events in all monsoon regions that's the, the, with the high confidence. Observed uh, changes in the monsoon system uh, rainfall uh, vary by region with, with significant uh, decadal variations. According to IPCC's uh, sixth assessment report, the Northern Hemisphere land monsoon rainfall as a whole declined from 1950 to 1980 and rebounded after the, the 80s due to competing influences of uh, internal climate variability and radiative forcing from rising greenhouse gas uh, concentrations and aerosol forcing. A decadal to multi-decadal in, in, internal variability uh, over South o Asia, East Asia and West Africa increases in, in monsoon precipitation due to warming of the, from greenhouse gas emissions uh, were, were counteracted uh, by decreases in monsoon precipitation due to cooling from human caused aerosol emissions over the 20th century. Increases in West African monsoon precipitation since the 80s uh, are partly due to growing influence of greenhouse gas, gases and reductions in the cooling effect, the effect of uh, human caused aerosol emissions over Europe and North America. However, it, rem it remains a challenge to quantify their relative contributions. 
while there has been an overall improvement in the skill of monsoon forecasts in, the, in all time scales, uh, right from short rains to seasonal during recent years, the increasingly erratic monsoon weather patterns in the backdrop of climate change are making forecasts more unpredictable at local and regional scales. As a result, uh, monsoon prediction at the regional scales is becoming more challenging and at the same time uh, more imperative. Thus, uh, strengthening of uh, monsoon research uh, to better support operations and services is a prior priority for many WMO members today. An accurate the prediction of monsoon activities and associated rainfall is vital for the sustainable future of the planet and for the contribution of uh, sustainable development goals on the disaster risk reduction, fresh water availability and supply, and food security, etc. WMO has established a dedicated hydrological coordinating panel to join all forces and, and sectors in international and regional organizations and institutions and academia to have concerted approach uh, toward the Millennium Challenges and Sustainable Development Goals. As the specialized agency of the United Nations system, competent weather and climate uh, and water, WMO, through the National Meteorological and Hydrological Services of its uh, 187 member states and six uh, member territories, ensured delivery of timely warnings and continuously offers reliable and authoritative support regardless of uh, geographical and political boundaries. WMO has always been in the forefront of in promoting both advances in sciences and technologies in the weather, climate, water and environment, etc. and application of uh, those sciences uh, and frontier technologies into operational services to societies. To meet evolving challenges in sciences and technologies and emerging requirement for better societies, WMO took the initiative in adopting Earth system approach to understanding and predicting weather, climate and water and environment related phenomena with impacts, including mon monsoons and approved uh, the WMO unified uh, data policy in last October. And for the international uh, exchange of Earth system data during the Extraordinary Congress. This uni unified data policy covers, covers Earth system data and products uh, that will, will be exchanged uh, among members under various categories. It will have a critical and long-term long impacts uh, in all dimensions of WMO communities and have laid a solid uh, foundation for improved uh, understanding a new development of monsoon science and prediction technologies. WMO is always behind you to provide su support uh, to meeting societal needs. In addition, I would like to share with you that WMO has developed a regional concept and approaches which enable regional structure and governance to most fit regional diversity and, and characteristics to meet the evolving regional and national requirements. These uh, regional concepts and approaches uh, shall serve as reliable vehicles and platforms for WMO members to provide uh, monsoon weather and climate forecasting services with unified international quality and standard. I hope uh, you explore and fully utilize uh, the regional structure and governance uh, to enhance skills and competencies of uh, members, national meteorological and hydrological services through a global network of monsoon forecasting. I am confident that your participation in this workshop, that your respective scientific communities will further highlight the importance of research in the further, in further in enhancing the understanding of the monsoon system and lead to advancement in its prediction. The outcome of this workshop will enable your national meteorological and hydrological services to fulfill its fundamental mission to provide increasingly better services, not only to your respective national communities in protecting life and property and in support of uh, sustainable development, uh, but the global community as a whole. I can ensure you that WMO will be at your side throughout this vital humanitarian in endeavor. I wish to thank once again Dr. Mohapatra for his kind invitation 
to his in entire team for the excellent coordination arrangement in organizing this online monsoon wor workshop. To all participants of this workshop, uh, your presence today speaks of your deep commitment uh, to continue working together towards a safer world. May your collective endeavors uh, in this workshop uh, be fruitful. Thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you, respected uh, Secretary General, uh, for the very wonderful speech and also for highlighting how the WMO acting will be working towards the tendering the network med services. Thank you very much. And also, I must thank our the, the SGOP Secretariat team for kindly arranging this one. Jirudina Kahana and Toyang Peng. So these two, I was in constant touch with them to get this message. Thank you very much. So now may I request uh, uh, our team to play the video message from the Honorable Sec uh, Minister of Arts Sciences, Dr. Jitendra Singh. We have got it, the message from them. So it is a video message because of busy schedule, he could not come to the parliament session. So we'll now play the message given by the Honorable Minister of Arts Sciences, Dr. Jitendra Singh. Please. Namaste. I welcome you all to this uh, international workshop on monsoon being hosted by the India Meteorological Department, Ministry of Earth Sciences, Government of India. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be pleased to know that India is blessed with two monsoons. The southwest monsoon during the month from June to September and the northeast monsoon during October to December. Indian monsoons, the most prominent of the world's monsoon systems, which affect the people in every sphere of their life and have been there from ancient history to modern times. And these have also controlled their very everyday existence. India, ladies and gentlemen, has a long history of seasonal forecasting monsoon. After the Great Famine of India during 1876-78, under the British rule, and the large-scale crop failure that followed, there was a need for developing a tool for the seasonal monsoon rainfall forecast. Indeed, the Indian monsoon and the summer monsoon particularly was the target of the very first science-based seasonal forecast in the world with an attempt by eminent Henry Francis Blenford, who also went on to become the first Director General of the India Meteorological Department, IMD, way back in 1884, which was mandated to forecast monsoon rainfall based on the extent and thickness of the Himalayan snows. Thus, the importance of monsoon prediction for socio-economic applications was recognized quite early, but understanding its variability across a wide range of time and space scales and providing reliable predictions remained a challenge even today. Despite many scientific and technological advances, recognizing the importance of improving monsoon prediction, the prediction capabilities in a country, in a systematic and timely manner, the Government of India, under the leadership of Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi, has launched an ambitious and a well-resourced research program on mission mode called the Monsoon Mission. Through this mission, ladies and gentlemen, India has augmented its capability of high-performance computing the HPC, which is close to 10 petaflops now and is able to generate forecasts a very high resolution with 3 kilometer resolution using mesoscale model, 12 kilometer using global forecast system model, and about 38 kilometer using ocean atmosphere coupled model. The monsoon mission has therefore and thus helped in the significant improvement of monsoon forecasts in all the time scales, right from short range to seasonal. India is therefore proud of having one of the best monsoon prediction systems for 
generating real-time forecasts and warning all spatial scales. From a location-specific forecast to block, district, metallurgical subdivisions and homogeneous regions and temporal scales of a few hours, that is the new now cost, the three days, that is the short range forecast, the four to seven days, that is the medium range forecast, and one to four weeks, that is the extended range forecast, and one month to a season, which is the long range forecast. The second phase of monsoon mission also focuses on sectoral applications and prediction of extreme weather. Substantial support is being provided by the Government of India, headed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, under the, his guidance for monsoon research through the monsoon mission, which has successfully completed two phases and is about to embark on the third phase from this year. Monsoon mission was launched as a mission mode project by the Ministry of Earth Sciences, Government of India, with a vision to develop a state-of-the-art dynamical prediction system for the Indian monsoon rainfall. Under this program, the Ministry of Health Sciences has made significant progress in prediction of seasonal forecast of monsoon rainfall and in minimizing model biases. Predictions of extreme events like cyclones and heavy rainfall have also improved significantly due to the continuous research efforts made by the Ministry of Health Sciences. Probability of detection, which is an abbreviated form known as POD, for heavy rainfall warning during monsoon season is now 74% in the year 2021, which has improved by 51% in the year 2020, as compared to the year between 22, 2002 to 2020. A recent survey by the National Council of Applied Economic Research, NCAER, showed that investments of nearly rupees 1,000 crore made by the Ministry of Earth Sciences in improving weather forecasting over the past five years has generated economic benefits worth rupees 50,000 crore for farmers, livestock, and fishermen, which means a 50-fold gain from the investments alone. The seventh World Monsoon Workshop or a WMO International Workshop is hosted by India through the India Meteorological Department, Ministry of Earth Sciences, and is jointly coordinated by WWRP and WCRP. The International Workshop on Monsoon is a major coronarial symposia workshop series under the World Weather Research of the World Meteorological Organization, namely the WMO. The seventh workshop in the series is being organized at New Delhi, India, jointly by India Meteorological Department of Earth Sciences, Government of India, and the WWRP, and the Working Group on Tropical Meteorological Research, WGTMR, in cooperation with Monsoon's Panel of the World Climate Research Program, WCRP, and the International Monsoon Project of IMPO, hosted by the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, IITM, and Indian Meteorological Society, the IMS. And therefore, I'm sure the IEWM7 will provide a forum for researchers and forecasters to discuss recent advances and current issues involving monsoons as key features of Earth system phenomena, covering weather to climate time scale, affecting large populations around the world. To conclude, I wish the seventh edition of International Workshop on Monsoon a great success, and I'm sure we'll come out with some very valuable conclusions and inferences. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, and Namaste. Namaskar, thank you very much, sir, for your nice uh, uh, inputs uh, given to the participants for uh, deliberation. Thank you very much, sir. So now it is uh, the last uh, and formal duty of giving a formal vote of thanks to all our uh, distinguished uh, guests. So may I now start the we are very much thankful to respected honorable ministers of our science, the government of India, Dr. Jitinder Singh Ji for uh, spending their valuable time in spite of busy schedule of parliament session going on and recording the message at least when we got it. So for the thing. So thank you very much, sir. Now respected SG, Secretary General, WMO also, we are very thankful to you and also entire team of the WMO Secretariat for kindly 
uh, spending valuable time for the giving the message and also the supporting IMD India for hosting this event. Thank you very much, sir. Now our secretary, Dr. Ravichandan sir, M. Ravichandan sir, NSC IOC chairman, and he is also contribution in supporting from the beginning and also our previous secretary for host this conceptualizing this uh, this monsoon workshop and uh, valuable guidance from time to time. Thank you very much, sir, for your guidance for conducting this workshop. Now our sincere thanks to the Dr. M. Mahapatra, sir, Director General of Metrology. Under his guidance, we could be able to do at a local level the minute things and also the also the all arrangements are done in IMD because of his valuable support. And uh, thank you very much, sir, for your guidance. Then also we are thankful to our uh, International Committee Chairman, Chair, Chairs, Professor C.P. Cheng and Dr. Ajit Tyagi, sir. Uh, for time to time, we are uh, holding deliberation from last many months for uh, this one. And uh, their constant support guidance was helpful to LOC for organizing this event and also planning this uh, timetable. And so, so we are very much thankful to all the uh, co-chairs of uh, ISC. In addition, the, we have also the having frequent meeting, Dr. Yukari and, and Takayabu and Ju Wang, co-chairs WMO, WGTMR, that is also, we are there. So we are thankful to both of them because we are for the planning of all this workshop. And uh, also we are bringing out a special issue of Mausam so that that also we are planning together. And we are in this regard, we are thankful to both of them. Then our special thank to WWRP head, and, and WCRPA, Dr. Estelle and Dr. Michael Sparrow, respectively, for spending the variable time and coming here and, and the explaining how the WCRP and WRP are working to enhancing the monsoon forecast. There are many things, and yes, I should must thank the IITM director, Dr. Kis, R. Kishnan, the, the uh, executive director of IMPO, Dr. Rupa Kumar, because they conducted the training workshop that is actually happened simultaneously, I mean, it's a side by side event, but uh, we could not hold it. So it was a November last year, it was arranged. So thanks to IITM and the IMPO, Dr. Susmita Joseph also part of it. So that entire training team, it was a very successful thing, training as part of this IMW workshop. So that training was also very successfully conducted. And uh, my team here in uh, local levels, uh, yes, uh, it is a technical team also, Miss, uh, they gave me constant support and uh, under the guidance of DGM, sir. So just to name few, Dr. Arul Alan, Mr. Bushir, and all our international division, Dr. Giri, our admin, Dr. Sony, and the getting MHA, MEA clearance, and uh, also our, all our staff here. I just, uh, I, because of lack of time, I'm not taking any name, name, but yes, we are thankful to each and everybody, those who have contributed for making this event a success. Finally, I must thank all the invited speaker and contributors and also the participants for in spite of their timing problem constraint. So I must thank all of them for a valuable uh, contribution and also giving the talk. So that you also very scientifically, it will be very useful. This proceeding will be available for everybody in the later time in YouTube and other video. So thanks to everybody, finally, we are thanking all of you for the attendance. Thank you very much. Since, okay, so we'll just uh, thanks once again. And uh, since uh, we have uh, just uh, over past the time and there will be no break uh, and uh, we'll go for the one invited session directly followed by this one. So just we can have another three, four minutes just back break and we'll come back after another five minutes, let us say. Local it is nineteen seven forty. We can back come back. Five minutes break.
टैग सब ठीक दिख रहा है शेयरिंग हो रहा है ठीक से हो रहा है ना हम्म ओके ओके हो गया अनशेयर करे ठीक है किधर चला गया यार आप टॉप शेयरिंग कर दीजिए स्टॉप हुआ कि नहीं व्यूइंग सही एप्लीकेशन कोई दिखा रहे हैं शायद हुआ है लग रहा है हाँ हो गया अभी हो, अभी हो गया हो गया So I will try to do from my side. If there will be any problem, then I can ask. Yes, sir, no problem. So, so should we start now? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, hello. Yes, Yani. I'm trying to. Um, share my presentation. Can you see? Can you see my um, file on your screen? Yeah, we, we will be sharing from our side now. Or you will share. Okay. So should we start now? Yeah, so we can start now. So now, okay. yeah, so first, uh, yeah, we'll start now this session. And uh, now I will invite uh, Dr. Yali Liu to kindly share the session. And uh, Dr. Yali now is currently a senior scientist at the State Key Laboratory of Severe Weather, Chinese Academy of Metal Sciences, China. Her research mainly focuses on convective storms and extreme weather. She received her PhD degree at University of Utah, United States in 2003. She was the chief scientist of the Southern China Monsoon Rainfall Experiment. SCMREX, a WMO WRP research or development project of 2014 to 2020. Over to you, Yali. Okay, thanks for the uh, introduction. Um, this session uh, includes four talks. The first one will be given by myself. So I'm trying to share my screen. Can you see? Yes, it's fine. Okay. The title of my talk is Convective and Microphysical Characteristics of Extreme Precipitation Reviewed by Microsoft's Observations over the Pearl River Delta at Monsoon Coast. My talk consists of four parts. I'll start from the background. Sorry for interrupting. Actually, your slides are not moving. You, you cannot see my screen. Now it is title only. So I suggest you to unshare and share the screen. Instead of presentation, please share the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. You answer. It is slightly not moving. So you answer, then just share the screen. Okay. Yeah, it is the screen at the leftmost panel. Okay, I see. Okay. Yes, okay. 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 Yeah. yeah, extreme precipitation has caused the largest economic losses and the deaths on the earth. And increased trends uh, have been found over many regions over the world at hourly, daily, and longer term scales. Such increasing in extreme precipitation is associated with the climate warming and also rapid urbanization. While the thermodynamic contribution to the increase in trends um, has been well understood, 
dynamic contribution remains unclear, especially the message skill and the convective processes. Regarding the overlapping fraction between extreme precipitation and extreme convection, satellite-based observations um, indicate large uh, substantial regional variations. Some studies have found less than 10% of overlapping fraction um, on the um, on, on, on um, mostly overland, including monsoon coast. Well, um, another recent study uh, has found um, about 40, 30 to 40 percent at uh, the monsoon coast and uh, over 60 percent over many uh, land regions. Um, moreover, the satellite based uh, previous uh, studies have um, mainly focused on. Uh, deep convection over the monsoon regions and uh, paid less attention to uh, the shallow convective systems with weaker convection. Therefore, the microphysical characteristics of extreme precipitation in the monsoon regions are not well known. Recent studies have found that extreme heavy a short-term rain rate sometimes is accompanied by low-level mass gamma scale rotation, uh, which means uh, had diameters of uh, several to a thousand uh, kilometers. Theoretically, such uh, low-level rotation can enhance the upward motion in, in the low levels through the nonlinear dynamic accel acceleration, uh, which can enhance the warm rain processes and increase the surface rainfall. Uh, we have also found the maximum hourly rain rate up to 290 millimeter per hour, influencing the capital city, Guangzhou, on um, the coast of uh, South China, was produced by a weaker um, convective system accompanied by a massive gamma scale vortex. However, the statistical relation between extreme short-term rain rate and the rotation at monsoon coast is unknown. With that background, we aim to document the convective and microphysical characteristics of extreme precipitation on a typical monsoon coast, South China. Here, it is the Pearl River data, including the convective intensity, liquid and mixed phase microfics, and also mass gamma scale rotation. We mainly use the dew polarization radar uh, located at the capital city, Guangzhou, combined with numerous two-dimensional video distrometers and the low-frequency e-field detection array and the densely distributed automatic weather stations at a minute uh, the temporal resolution. We have used a series of state-of-the-art methods for the uh, quantitative participation estimate for the ice water content and the liquid water content retrieval, and for the rain drop size distribution retrieval, as well as, as, well as for the atmosphere calculation to estimate the presence and the intensity of rotation inside the convective systems. We define our extreme precipitation feature, EPF, as a contiguous area, uh, like this, of strong uh, radar reflectivity, which is at least three uh, three square kilometer and contains at least 0.5 square kilometer of extreme rain uh, rate. The threshold value of extreme rain rate is, uh, four, is 140 millimeter per hour. This de definition is an event-based method, which is similar to um, uh, the definition used uh, to define the pre precipitation feature in the trim data set developed uh, at the University of Utah. Here are two examples of the EPF. One is um, vertically centered up to uh, beyond 15 kilometer, and then the other is hardly uh, beyond the six kilometer. And we found totally more than 9,000 EPFs in two warm seasons. And, um, and they, they are produced by uh, convective systems uh, with convective uh, intensity covering a wide uh, wide range. About 17 percent um, has uh, EPFs have uh, the maximum height of 40 dBz echo top, reaching up to nine kilometer. 
uh, they are defined as intense convection because uh, large precipitation particles such as grapples and even hills um, are lifted uh, up to um, beyond the minus 22 degree level by strong updrafts. And on the other hand, uh, about 34% EPFs um, have a maximum height of 40 dB the ectop below 6 km. They are named weak convection because their up, the convective objects are not strong enough to uh, support grapples uh, beyond uh, uh, minus 4 degree. And about a half of the EPF are um, named moderate convection with grapples between 6 and 9 km. And the um, independent uh, observations of uh, the lightning flash um, strongly support the uh, estimation of a convective intensity based on the read observations. Below the uh, freezing level, we can see uh, the ZDR and the KDP increase toward the ground, which means uh, both the size and the mass of a raindrop. Uh, decreases when the raindrops are falling toward the ground and due to the warm rain processes. And a such increase rate uh, to, uh, of the KDP is even larger in the weight, uh, with weaker convection, while in, in the intense convection, the KDP below 4 km remain nearly constant. And um, meanwhile, the ratio of uh, liquid water path to ice water path increases from uh, 2.6 in the intense convection to 4.8 in the weak convection. All these results uh, collectively suggest that uh, overall, uh, the extreme rain uh, product, uh, production is uh, contributed significantly by warm rain processes, especially with weak convection. Uh, meanwhile, about two thirds EPFs um, are also contributed by melting of aggregates and the grapples uh, formed by aggregation and rhyming aloft. If we look at the range of size distribution, we found a very high con concentration regardless of convective in intensity. The, the uh, ring drop concentration is about one order of magnitude larger than the continental regime. And the uh, range of size uh, are mostly moderate between the maritime region and the continental region. Um, the liquid phase microphysical processes uh, is dominated by coalescence. Um, and it's uh, up, um, beyond 90% with the uh, weak convection. Um, the size sorting and a uh, breakup uh, associated with the larger raindrops and also the evaporation are all quite limited, especially with weaker convection. We also examined the seasonal variations of EPF uh, characteristics by uh, grouping the EPFs into uh, four periods, namely the pre-monsoon onset period, active monsoon period, post-monsoon period, and the days with the tropical cyclones influencing um, South China coast. It is found that um, the EPFs during the active monsoon period and the post monsoon period vertically extend to higher latitudes than the other two periods and with uh, um, much more uh, flashes. Um, so this means more intense convection and associated with the extreme rainfall production during the active monsoon period and the post-monsoon periods. Um, and also, uh, dur when, um, during the um, tropical cyclone days, uh, the extreme rainfall was produced by even more active accretion and auto conversion of liquid drops with a higher concentration of smaller raindrops in thicker warm cloud layers. We found 265 records of hourly rain rate, uh, larger than 75 millimeter per hour, uh, observed by the rain gauges over the Pearl River Delta. And about 70% of, of those EXHP records 
um, are um, accompanied by uh, the gamma uh, method gamma scale rotation. And uh, all the most extreme winds uh, beyond 120 millimeter per hour are all with rotation. However, if we compare the mean ring rate between the two groups with rotation and without rotation respectively, the means are almost the same. And we could not find any correlation between um, extreme outer perturbation and the atmosphere shear. Um, so uh, this is likely um, because of the wake uh, rotation associated with this extreme rainfall protection. And uh, the atmosphere shear is uh, quite uh, smaller compared to the, uh, the tornado producing mass cyclones in eastern United States. And these um, features are close, closely associated with the environment conditions on the which the extreme rainfall was produced. The environment atmosphere was very humid with precipitable water um, beyond uh, about uh, six, uh, 64 to 66 millimeter um, by average. And the Cape was uh, um, moderate to high, uh, mostly about 1,000 to 2,000 geo per kilogram. Uh, this uh, means that the thermodynamic conditions are very favorable for the warm ring processes. On the other hand, the low level vertical wind shear and the storm relative hostility are all quite small. Uh, they are smaller than their counterparts in the United States, uh, which means the environment conditions are not favorable for formation of strong rotation inside the convective storms. So uh, these results indicate that the weak rotation likely results from strong condensation induced light heat release. To conclude, we have investigated the convective and microphysical characteristics of extreme precipitation at a typical monsoon coast, South China, uh, based on the long-term observations with minute and sub-kilometer resolutions. The major findings are as follows. Uh, first of all, we found that the extreme rain production uh, is associated with a wide range of convective in intensity. Only 70% is a con uh, intense convection and about 34% uh, is a weak convection and another uh, half is about moderate convection. Overall, extreme rain rate is contributed significantly by warm rain processes, especially with weaker convection. The range of set distribution features are high concentration and mostly um, moderate size of raindrops. Coalescence dominates the liquid phase microphysical processes. On the tropical cyclone days, even more active accretion and auto conversion of liquid drops with a higher concentration of smaller raindrops in thicker warm cloud layers. About 70% extreme hourly precipitation larger than 75 millimeter per hour uh, was uh, uh, with the best mass gamma scale rotation, but uh, there is uh, no correlation between their intensity. Uh, the rotation is generally weak and likely results from strong condensation induced light heat release in environments with high precipitated water, moderate to high cape, and a low vertical wind shear. Thank you very much for your attention. So any questions? I have a question and sure in, sure okay I think uh, can you exp uh, is the terrain over the southern China play any role to enhance the uh, the echo top of the convection system uh, the terrain, terrain at the South China coast uh, they yeah. play a very important role in the convective initiation and also the development of heavy rainfall storms. Uh, but it's not very clear whether they can um, make the echo top uh, higher. Uh, I'm not sure. It's very important for convective initiation because it can 
um, produce the lifting impact on, um, on the uh, warm and moisture air from the South China Sea. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you. I have, I have a question. <clears throat> this is Mohan oh. from NCM. Hello. Okay. Hi. Yeah, yeah hi. Uh, nice talk. Uh, I had a question regarding this two, this 2D video distributor measurements that you are taking for your mm -hmm. study. Uh, the, the instrument is very sensitive for the large humidities and higher wind speeds. So how do you, I mean, what kind of care did you take while measuring those, uh, for, for these measurements? Or did you done any calibration? Or oh, for the 2DVD? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 2DVD, um, you know, uh, Xiantong Liu, my collaborator, he is an expert on 2 DVD. So he he processed uh, all the measurements. Okay. <laughs> because most of the most of the uh, the uh, DSD relationships uh, with the 2 DVD distributor, uh, the terminal velocities of the rainfall is uh, highly affected for the winds. So I was just wondering what KRD did you take? Yeah. So, Actually, thanks. the 2 DVD measurements are mainly used to um, uh, establish some uh, relationship between, um, you know, about the, yeah, uh, the, the range of size distribution uh, parameters. And then that is used in our retrieval of ice water content and liquid water content. Okay. Yeah, it's mainly used here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? Can I ask a question? Hello? IATM. Can I ask the question? Sure, please. Go ahead. Yes, Go ahead. Your, it's a very good presentation. I really enjoyed it. So I would like to ask that you uh, importantly mentioned about the mixed phase clouds, which is uh, between six to nine is contributing much, like forty more than forty percent as compared to the other one. And the mixed scale I'm rotations sorry, is explained. You're very clearly. I'm sorry. Uh, one is the mixed phase clouds. In between six to nine the phase class. kilometers uh, altitude. The phase class. Yeah, six to nine kilometer altitude is uh, much contributing, like more than forty percent is. So that is your blue things. And another one is uh, the visual rotation uh, explains seventy percent. I just want to ask, ask that whether the various cloud regions, like warm clouds, mixed phase and uh, ice clouds, whether they are merging. Yeah, I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. I'm very sorry. I cannot hear you very clearly. I beg your pardon? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, I will write a question first to you so because my audio may be an issue okay if no more questions uh, we may go ahead so let me stop my sharing now let's welcome the next speaker dr ak sahai from india Thank you, Yali. Yes, uh, I can hear. I can hear you, and I can see you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my topic will uh, be on extended range. Please use system. the full screen. Pardon? Full screen. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm not. Uh, Uh, giving details of the uh, skills and other things. But uh, one thing uh, I will mention here that monsoon intraseasonal variability, which is the main uh, thing uh, which we are uh, predicting on extended range two to four weeks. 
Uh, this is modulated by synoptic interinval and decadal variability. So all variabilities are uh, mixed with, uh, and we have to uh, predict uh, only intra-seasonal variability. Uh, on top of this, this climate change is also there, which is uh, modulating uh, monsoon intra-seasonal oscillations. And uh, therefore, their uh, prediction is a great challenge. And uh, But one thing is there that despite several uncertainties in the representation of climate process, the current generation models uh, represent the hydrological cycle and particularly the mean monsoon is predictable up to a certain extent. So after the launch of uh, monsoon mission by government of India, National Monsoon Mission, uh, which our Honorable Secretary has mentioned, uh, we have started working on extended range uh, since 2011 uh, using uh, NCEPT uh, CFS model and then uh, we did various uh, experiments and other things and this prediction uh, is playing an important role in improving the agriculture and water management health disaster and other sectors. I will come to that. So extended and prediction system at present is uh, operational at uh, uh, IMD which was developed uh, in collaboration with uh, NCEPT uh, at Indian Institute of Tropical Metallurgy. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to deal on this, but this system is uh, giving for monsoon active and break conditions and uh, monsoon interseasonal oscillation, MGO, also heat wave, cold wave, and northeast monsoon cyclogenesis. And it has uh, uh, sectorial applications in agriculture, hydrology, energy, health sector, and urban planning, and so on. So it has a reasonable skill in predicting the extreme rainfall events, genesis and track of cy uh, tropical cyclones, seed web, cold web. So I'm not going uh, on detail on the skills. Uh, here you, there are two websites. One is at uh, IATM, another at uh, IMD. You can see uh, this extended end products. Now, uh, what products are there? One is the deterministic categorical forecast of below normal, near normal, above normal uh, for the uh, weekly mean from first week to four week. So this is the latest forecast. Latest forecast will be issued uh, now tomorrow on uh, based on today's initial condition. So we, this is last week forecast. So here you, you will get categories of below normal. And so all there are altogether 16 members are there in this. So based on 16 members, one determines member mean, MME is that. And then we also give probabilistic forecast based on each. So in some places, even you will see that there is a uh, extreme, uh, you know, above normal uh, predicted is there, but you will find that this is actually uh, uh, near normal or so, uh, if, if you see the percentage. So it, sometimes it happened that one member will be very high and therefore it will make it above normal, but most of the uh, members are along the normal side. So it will be the normal in the probabilistic forecast. So we have, when we are using this, we have to see both this deterministic and probabilistic forecast. We also produce minimum temperature uh, and maximum temperature. And here I am just giving uh, anomalies for four week minimum temperature left side and maximum temperature right side and then so these are uh, actually uh, we are generating based on maximum temperature heat wave and severe heat wave for four week uh, and also we in different uh, uh, regions homogeneous region central india north and west and northeast india and south peninsular india we are giving how it is uh, different than the climatology. So you will see that in higher side of temperature uh, in central India, it is uh, giving that in the first, uh, in, in, there may be in the total, uh, you can say in the 15 uh, uh, day, it will be uh, slightly cooler than climatology, but uh, North and West India and uh, Northeast India, they are, uh, warmer than climate. So this type of products also we are giving what will be the four week probability of uh, cyclogenesis and evolution uh, of uh, cyclones. We are also giving what will be the uh, how the uh, MGO will be moving in the different phases and uh, how the associated OLR 
in different weeks are uh, there is and also uh, daily evolution of uh, uh, this mgo and associated uh, uh, olr anomalies and also we are giving this uh, one from wheat sector to wheat sector it is going and when it is more than one and when it is very high so all these things uh, about mgo we are giving now this these products so we are also uh, means uh, collaborating with various uh, iits universities and central agencies to generate and uh, um, co produce various uh, uh, products so one product is by uh, suppose uh, this is for agriculture so this is uh, uh, given by central research institute of dryland uh, agriculture and you will see that they are giving using every week uh, they will give what is the minimum temperature maximum temperature and for each uh, state and each district they will give some how what is the condition how you have to go and what are the advisories so due to decrease in temperature it is advised to irrigate the banana and so on uh, this type of uh, uh, products are being generated uh, then there is a hydrological uh, uh, from iit gandhinagar we are generating this uh, uh, products so here you will see weekly soil moisture what is so, so various uh, products uh, are being generated one example is this soil moisture and other things uh, using this uh, forecast then Any problem? So, hi, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. I, I have put the presentation. Okay, fine, fine. 
So uh, next, next slide, please. Yeah, so now I will show some uh, applications on heat wave products. Next. Why we are seeing the heat wave? Because if you see here from 1951 to uh, 2017, uh, every decade, and now it is a large uh, part of uh, uh, East India and also Southeast India and uh, uh, Southern country also is affected by heat waves. Next. And these heat waves, actually when there is a drought uh, in the previous year or deficient monsoon and this year is a uh, heat wave there is 60 percent chance of heat wave this year hello you can hear me hello can you hear me, you hear me? okay so then there is a uh, so that affects uh, agriculture and drinking water. Also, if the temperature is uh, very high, this is one uh, news clipping in uh, of 6 June 2017, that power demand in Delhi crossed 6,500 megawatt. So temperature and heat wave uh, forecast uh, is very, very important. Next. Next slide. Okay. Yeah. We can, we can see the screen. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Okay, please continue. Yeah, so this is uh, what we are generating. This I am giving one example on 16th May 2018. Next. So, yeah, so top three panels are hot days, heat wave, and severe heat waves, how it was observed from 18th May to 1st June. And there are three panels below forecast from 2nd May, 9th May, and 16th May. You can see that even from 2nd May also, we were able to predict hot days and heat waves, and some part of severe heat wave also. Next. Uh, same thing we can see here. Uh, this is the observed four week mean for heat wave and severe uh, heat wave, and th this is the prediction of uh, heat wave and se severe heat wave. So, more or less, we are able to predict. Next. And then there is the effect of humidity. Just click on, click on this slide. Yeah, so you will see that, okay, yeah, these regions actually where humidity is uh, anomaly is uh, positive, and that, that will be more worsened with the effect of uh, uh, Tmax. Next. But this product's uh, uh, generation has no meaning if it is not being utilized. And therefore, if you see in 2015, uh, which was uh, uh, more than 2,500 deaths were uh, there in India, and then the National Disaster Management Authority came into picture that no, this, this is a type of uh, national uh, disaster, natural disaster, so let us um, make some efforts so they with collaboration with the india meteorological department and various organization based on the forecast they in 2016 though 2016 is the warmest year since 1901 but you see that from 2015 to 2016 this has drastically decreased and then 17 18 also 17 was third uh, warmest and uh, 21 only four deaths and so so you can see that significant uh, in, uh, decrease in deaths due to heat waves occurred. So this is only possible if it the forecast advisories are being utilized by the decision makers and disaster managers and uh, other uh, state next. Yeah, the, then I will come to hydrological products. This is one product in 2018. You can see uh, uh, this is from uh, uh, left hand side is is the uh, forecast from 28th july to 8th august and the second one how it was observed and this is for drought monitoring spi index and based on this if you see there are almost uh, same category and one category there are 70 more than 70 percent uh, 73.4 percent were there in within one category so this forecast of spi for monitoring drought is very useful next this is also verified 
by IIT Gandhinagar uh, products that uh, these are the observations up to 7 to uh, 45 leads uh, and these are the uh, IITM IMD uh, products generated by our uh, climate uh, variables for runoff and root zone soil moisture in this Skillful. Next, it is also seen for five uh, river basin uh, in Maharashtra in this region. That how you see this is this line is observed for precipitation and mean temperature, but runoff and soil moisture and stream flow. So these are seven day, fourteen day, and three week and four week forecast. You can see that it is very reasonably capturing the uh, observation. So this these uh, products are very useful for utilization in hydrological sector next uh, these products are also being utilized in agriculture sector by uh, uh, and as i have told you national advisory bulletin by crida next they are taking this uh, observed realized rainfall and then next uh, the two weeks uh, predicted uh, rainfall uh, and then again, they give these advisories for different uh, countries, uh, different states. Like this is for Maharashtra rainfall received during this October uh, major metrological subdivision in Vidarbha and Maratwara, how they are giving next. They have also given for Odisha, Assam, other states next. Now I will give one example. Uh, of uh, and I will compare how means how it is important for decision makers and to, for utilizers or even for the uh, disaster managers to uh, utilize this forecast. This is I am giving one example of 6 June initial condition forecast for uh, 15 to uh, 20. This is second week forecast. This is third week forecast. Next, and this is. A particular region Vidarbha, you see that they got very good rainfall up to 8 June. So total up to 10 June, they were uh, even though there was sufficient realized rainfall during the first 10 days of June, and this was fulfilling the criteria of sowing. But this is the uh, five-day short range forecast, and based on this last uh, slide to uh, extended end forecast, it was told that you no, know, there will be not much rainfall for the next 10-15 uh, days. So don't go uh, for sowing unless there is sufficient rain. And similar advisories were used or issued in 2017. But that was not utilized by state government uh, authorities and um, uh, agricultural authorities in that sense. And huge loss was there uh, for in the Vidarbha and Maratwara region. But this year when we gave the forecast, a lot of emphasis was there. And even the chief minister of Maharashtra, he came on to TV and radio and he advised farmers to follow the advisory. And then what happened? Only 8% of area uh, was shown by 25th June. Uh, but uh, in the 2017, 45% area was uh, already shown for that. So they have not utilized the advisory in 2017. So as the forecast was correct and sowing was not undertaken in 2018, there was no report of crop loss, but there was- I'm sorry, Dr. Sakhai, yeah. the, the time is over. Yeah, yeah, just- I'm sorry. Next. Next. Uh, this is also being health products, I have told you. Next. So we are giving for dengue and uh, Malaria, this is one example. Next. Next. We are giving deterministic and probabilistic forecast both. Next. Next. So here, before this. Okay, you are not having other. Okay, fine. So then uh, since uh, we uh, when we compared this uh, forecast, which we are using with the real data, we found that only temperature will not be sufficient to give the malaria and uh, dengue things. So we did some research and we found that rainfall and other parameters are also very important. And then we developed another thing. Next. 
So now I will come to the summary that, that these forecasts are very useful. Uh, and but for extreme events, there are especially temporary errors, and therefore we are in uh, going for the next version for using multi physics, multi uh, member, and uh, vertical resolution. Also, we are increasing, and uh, we are also using AI ML. But the most important thing is for better services in various sectors, a strong collaboration between weather climate scientists and stakeholders, uh, and co-production is very much needed. And then for the disaster managers and uh, uh, other managers, they have to utilize this. But unless there is error in a special temporal uh, is uh, uh, reducing, uh, it is very difficult for them also to utilize. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sahai. Because of the time limit, let's move on to the next speaker. Thank Thanks a lot. Yeah, nice presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, issue with my presentation. No okay. Thank you. Yeah, the next uh, invited talk will be given by Professor Min Jun Yang. Yeah, Professor Min Jun Yang received his PhD. Oh. <laughs> So, Professor Yang. Please share in your screen. Okay. Let me try again. Sure. Can you see my screen now? Not yet. Can you see my screen now? Not yet. Hmm, some technical problem. Should you try again? Okay. Uh, sir, do you want uh, us to share? Uh, maybe you share for me. I, I have some technical problem. Good. Can you see the screen now? Yeah, very good. Okay, thank you. Can you, you continue? You. Okay, yeah. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, the top, the title of my talk is the evolution of the water budget and the prestation efficiency of the mesoscale climate system associated with the southwesterly monsoon flow over the South China Sea. Okay, next. I think the motivation of the study is the because the, there are always abundant moisture transport associated with the monsoon flow, and that moisture frequently produces heavy rainfall and severe flooding over the East Asia area. Therefore, an improved understanding and the prediction of the moisture transfer is necessary. So two scientific questions we would like to study in this research. First is, how does the moisture transfer along the southwesterly monsoon floor across the South China Sea will change with the increase or decrease, decrease of, of the low level moisture and the wind speed? The second is that uh, whether the wind convergence or the water vector advection play a more important role in the change of the um, vapor flux convergence associated with the monsoon flow. Next. So we would like, we use the Wolf model to conduct a modeling study. And the version of the Wolf model is 3.9. We have a 90 hours simulation for the August 25th to August 28th in 2015. 
and we use uh, a triply nasty grid. The outer grid has a grid size of 27 kilometer, and the mid uh, middle domain is has the grid size of nine kilometer, and the inner domain have the grid size of three kilometer. For boundary condition and the initial condition, we use the e ECNWF ERA interim model. And for the for the microfluidic skin, we use the Morrison skin. And we only use the cumulus skin on the on the outer domain of the 27 kilometer grid. And in addition to the control simulation, we use uh, we also conduct four sensitivity study. So basically and uh, for the low level in the low level from surface to 700 millibar we e increase the relative humidity either 10 percent by the weight 10 experiment or decrease the relative humidity by 10 percent as the dry 10 experiment and we also change the wind speed by increase the 10 percent called the faster 10 experiment or decrease the wind speed by the S10, slow 10 speed. So four sensitivity study is concluded. Set, uh, next, please. So the panel, the, the, the upper left pair panel shows the three hour accumulated rainfall from the sea of uh, sea morph global analysis. And the lower panel shows the corresponding wolf control simulation. So basically we can see associated with the monsoon flow, there are uh, the strong prestation and that's well captured by the wolf simulation. Next. And this one shows the comparison of the integrated water vapor. Uh, 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 um, and our upper panel shows shows the EIA interim large scale analysis, and lower panel shows the corresponding result from the wolf control simulation. So basically, we can see the wolf can capture the 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 movement of the, the moisture associated with the monsoon flow in the three days, and we can see in this three day. The the moisture months the moisture in the monsoon flow is changing from to the east of Taiwan to the west of Taiwan. Next, and this one shows the the result for the IVT integrated water vapor tra uh, tra transfer as defined in the in this equation, and the middle panel shows the control simulation result, and the Upper upper left is the wet ten by increasing ten percent relative humidity, and we can say by increasing the relative humidity, the moisture also increase, and then on on the dry ten experiment because of the reduction of the relative humidity, the IVT is also decreased. On the other hand, if we look at the, the phase ten experiment or a slow 10 experiment, the IVT result is similar to the control simulation. So basically we can see that for the integrated moisture transport, it is more sensitive to the moisture change, but less sensitive to the wind speed change. Next. So the upper panel shows the, the uh, eight, the 84 hour evolution of the IWVIMT, uh, integrated moisture transport and the integrated vapor transport associated with the monsoon flow. And the lower panel shows the relative change of the area, area average IWVIMT and the IVT from the sensitivity experiment relative to the control. So basically we can see that the, by increasing or decreasing the relative humidity, the integrated moisture transport and the integrated vapor transport have a bigger variation from 10 to 30 percent. On the other hand, by changing the wind speed 10 percent or decrease 10 percent, there is only 
very small change on the integrated moisture transport and the integrated vapor transport. Next. So we, uh, this, the upper panel shows the uh, system total evolution of the accumulated rainfall along the monsoon flow. So again, we can see that moisture change can have a big, big impact on the activity rainfall. And a lot of level speed change only have a, a very small impact on the, on the accumulated rainfall. And lower panel shows the relative change from the sensitive experiment compared to the control simulation. So basically, we can see that uh, a 10% increase in the relative humidity can produce about 20% increase in rainfall. And on the other hand, 10% decrease in relative humidity can produce 40% decrease in rainfall. So, and only 10% increase or decrease in wind speed will produce a very minor changes in the rainfall. So next, please. And from the vector and ana vector analysis, we can know that the, the virtual conversion can decompose into two components. The first one is the change due to the vapor advection. The second one is the change due to the wind convergence. So, so this one shows the time and the volume integrated horizontal moisture change. And we can see that it is mainly produced by the change of the wind speed convergence. On the other hand, the vapor advection have a negative, but a, but, but a minor impact on the moisture convergence. And if we look at the relative change with respect to the control simulation, again, we can see that the waste wet 10% and the dry 10% have a bigger impact on the moisture conversions. And the wind speed chains only have a very little, little impact on the moisture conversions. Next, please. And this one shows the, the simulation result in terms of radar reflectivity. Upper panel shows, shows the wet 10 experiment and middle panel shows the control experiment and lower panel shows the dry tan experiment so we can see that the by increasing the low level moisture the radar reflectivity become more much stronger and more organized and next please this shows the corresponding result for the wind speed change and again, we can see that changing the wind speed by 10% in 10% increase or 10% decrease, there is a little difference on the radar reflectivity field. So next, please. And we can also conduct a water budget study from here, uh, in, as indicated in the equation here. So basically, we can say uh, increase the moisture by 10%. Uh, have a little increase on the has some increase on the total condensation, and decrease by relatively by ten percent. That have a bigger decrease of the total condensation, and by changing the wind speed, increase ten percent or slow ten percent. There is only little difference on the total condensation. Next, please. And we can also uh, look at the large scale precession efficiency as defined in this equation here. So that basically does mean that the, the, the precession efficiency is defined as the total precession divided by the total vapor convergence and uh, some local hydrometer change. And the other way to look at the precession efficiency is a from the cloud microphysics perspective. So CMPE is the total precession divided by total condensation and the local hydrometer change. And we can also look at the 
condensation ratio, depletion ratio, and evaporation ratio as defined in this equation here. Next, please. So we also can see the, the, the change of the water budget by moving the MCS system in the quasi Lagrangian perspective. So basically, we can see that the horizontal flux convergence and the evaporation have uh, has a positive impact to increase the moisture, and the condensation the, again is it will condense all the hydrometer out of the atmosphere, so it's the negative impact. So we can see in the wet ten experiment there is a bigger increase at FC and the evaporation. And and by dry ten percent experiment, by decreasing the relative humidity, the moisture conversion and evaporation is also decreased. And on the other hand, for the wind speed experiment, the moisture budget is, is about the same uh, for between the ten percent increase or ten percent decrease. Next, please. So finally, we can see uh, the in the the change of the precipitation efficiency by moving with the MCS system in the quasi Lagrangian perspective. So basically, we can see the the, the precipitation efficiency is increased about ten percent from the ocean to the to the mountain on Taiwan. That's because of the terrain lifting. Uh, next, please. So we can see. The the conceptual model here, by increase by increase the low level moisture, or the wind speed that can produce the stronger convection that will have more rainfall. On the other hand, by reduce the moisture conver convergence or the wind speed that will have a, a temp that will produce less rainfall. And last please. Last slide, please. Okay, so basically we can see that the moisture convergence is more sensitive to the to, to the vapor amount, but less sensitive to the wind speed. And for the water vapor in the boundary layer, play a more important role to determine the convergence of the moisture convergence and rainfall. And for the and, and finally we can see that by following the MCS in the Lagrangian perspective. The precipitation efficiency will increase by ten percent uh, when in, when the MCS encountering Taiwan terrain from uh, from the ocean because of the terrain lifting, and we will we will further confine this moisture budget and the uh, monsoon rainfall function in the coming in the coming summer. So we will conduct a Tahoe field project in the in the late May to August uh, this year. To see whether the similar monsoon rainfall water budget also occur in the monsoon rainfall in the Tahoe experience this year. This is all I have. Thank you. Oh, very good presentation. I have one question. How did you change the wind speed? Oh, it's easy. Yeah, it's always easy to change the moisture in a model, but. How did you change the wind speed and without, you know, still can make your simulation stable? Yes, I I increased the wind speed by, by by in the initial condition and the boundary condition. And we we also do a PV inversion to to get the the reasonable change on the mass field, means the geopotential height. And the old, so the, and also so other, you you decrease the wind speed over uh, the entire simulation domain. Yes. Not only. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Now, yeah. Yeah. Very nice presentation. Yeah. Now let's welcome Dr. Brian Golding from UK. Okay, Professor Brent Golding. Okay, could you please share your presentation?
Sir, please unmute unmute your mic. I did not hear you. You hear me now? Yes. Right. Really? Now I will try and I will try and share again. But it's not. Oh, OK. OK, what do you see? Do you see the full screen or do you see half screen? You see two screens. One is you see two uh, yeah. screens. Yeah. Let's try. We can also see the negative slide. Okay, now it's it's good. Good, good, excellent. And that changed the. You see the second slide now. Yes. Excellent. Right. Uh, so. Um, Good, good afternoon, and for those elsewhere, it, good evening um, and good morning, I guess. Um, it's a great pleasure to join the uh, International Monsoon Workshop and to talk about the work of the High Impact Weather Project of WWRP uh, in the context of the sphere weather that takes place uh, in, uh, the, in, in the monsoons. So here's my outline. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about warnings and how uh, valuable they are, uh, about the um, role of um, the, the High Impact Weather Project and its objectives. And then uh, I'm going to briefly touch on some extreme impact events of last year and draw some conclusions from them as to how we should uh, be um, making oh making our warnings better what happened there uh, sir please load your presentation once again right yeah. is that better okay um right so so warnings protect lives and property and livelihoods and essential services from weather related hazards warnings a warning is a call to action but those actions can be very different depending on how far ahead uh, the event is likely to happen. So if we're warning of something to happen in a year's time, the, the action may be to develop plans for responding to it or to train people in how to respond. As we get closer to the event, then uh, there are preparations to be made, people to be put on standby, equipment to be uh, prepared, um, and uh, even more closely, to the event, then we take mitigation action, which may be evacuation, or it may be uh, temporary defenses. If in the case of a flood, uh, it may be um, uh, for, for a heat wave, setting up cooling stations, that sort of thing. And then finally, when the event happens, uh, there's the response. And it's still useful to have a warning at the time that the event happens because it can make sure that the response is in the right place and that it's timely and that it's most effective. And as the lead time shortens, then our confidence increases um, and our precision, our precision in space and time increases. And that justifies more costly responses. So the uh, World Weather Research Program uh, has been running its high impact weather project for six years now. And the project uh, is it's part of a 10 year project. It has uh, it, it addresses target G of the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction on uh, warning systems. And it has five core themes that span the various disciplines that are needed for an effective warning. And it looks at a range of weather related hazards. A distinction of the High Weather Project is that it brings together physical and social scientists broadly equally to jointly explore what makes an effective warning. So on the physical science side, we have a lot of processes that go on in the atmosphere and they lead to uh, uh, features of the weather that can be hazardous. But on the other side, we have uh, 
processes going on in society um, and internationally that lead to uh, features of communities around the world uh, which produce vulnerable populations. And when those vulnerable populations are exposed to hazards, that's when we get the worst disasters. So high weather has developed a simplified conceptual model of the warning chain, uh, which we call the five valleys of death. So mount the mountains you see in the picture here represent specific areas of expertise and often specific organizations or units within an organization. Um, and they have special languages, uh, they have their own jargon, um, and they have their own way of doing things. And uh, they will be all be very different. And if we try and communicate between them, then we get uh, stuck along the way because the next person along the chain doesn't understand what the first person is saying. So value is lost along the warning chain before it reaches the user at the end. So what we need is bridges. And those bridges represent partnership. They represent learning each other's languages. Uh, they represent making sure our technical systems talk to each other, uh, that our computer systems talk to each other, that we can uh, store the data, um, receive and store the data from each other. Um, and we make sure that there's nothing that uh, gets in the way and that destroys the bridge uh, when it's needed most in an emergency situation. So when we design a warning system, uh, we need to understand what the uh, uh, problem is that the decision maker has to solve. Uh, so it isn't simply a case of predicting that a, a severe weather event will happen. It's understanding what the decision makers uh, need to do if they know that that what that uh, weather uh, emergency is going to happen and what information they need in order to do that. Uh, and then the question is, well, where do we get that information from? And often what we'll find is that actually we can't do it, but we can get something similar. So we go back to the decision maker and say, can you use this uh, slightly different information, which we can provide you with. And so it's a slow, it's an iterative process and at the end of the day, everybody is happy that they can produce the information and it can be used. So that when the uh, extreme weather event happens, uh, we can produce that information and get it to the decision maker fast, uh, in the right form, in the right place, and the important actions can be taken to protect people and property and livelihoods. So high weather has brought together a vast amount of research from multiple disciplines to understand what the key issues are in opening up these uh, bridges, uh, building these bridges, opening up communication and partnership between organizations that produce warnings. And some of the ingredients are here. So it's the behavior of the recipient at the end of the chain that is the key success metric. That's what determines whether it's a successful warning or not. Co-design with the user ensures that the warning is both relevant to them and that they trust it. And in terms of trust, we need to, it needs to be clear what the source is and the user needs to recognize that source. All the way along the chain, communication is as important as content and warnings should refer to the impact of the hazard and give advice on how to respond. The hazard forecast itself needs to be combined with vulnerability information, exposure information, who and what is exposed to the hazard, uh, what are their vulnerabilities, how are they likely to be affected. Often hazards and their impacts are very small scale uh, very selective and so we need to obtain the hazards and weather forecasts at the highest available resolution. Monitoring of the physical and the social situation 
is important and requires high temporal spatial resolution observations from a variety of official sources and unofficial sources, including social media. Predictability, uncertainty and confidence are critical. They need to be communicated well and they need to be tracked through the warning chain. And for all of this, partnership between the organizations involved is essential. And to sum up all of that in a simple strap line, an effective warning is useful, usable and used. Useful in that it has the right information, usable in that it's in a format that is that will reach people and be understood and used in the sense that it enables decisions to be taken that will protect people and their property and their livelihoods. So looking briefly at uh, the specifics of the monsoon climate, um, particular hazards uh, that the, these things apply to are tropical cyclones and uh, intense rainfall. Uh, of course, with the associated flood, landslide and lightning hazards. Uh, but drought's also important and drought, drought has associated wildfires, uh, poor air quality, and heat waves. We need to know where these hazards are more frequent and intense and how that's likely to change. We need to know who is at risk, when and where. Um, are rural or urban settlements more vulnerable? Which particular hazards affect the urban settlements or the rural settlements? Are people in certain occupations more vulnerable? Uh, for heat waves, for instance, outdoor workers, uh, maybe. And which public services are vulnerable? Is timing important? Heavy rain during the monsoon is expected, uh, but is it less dangerous when people expect it? Uh, and of course, if heavy rain occurs at night, uh, it may be more dangerous than in the day because people can't see its effects. How can we protect people? As I said before, warnings need to be related to the ability to protect. And can we provide the information needed for these protective actions? How do we provide it? And when should we provide it? Who has the information that's needed? And who should communicate it? Is it the weather service that should communicate it? Or is it state governments? Uh, or is it cities? And to achieve this, a clear governance structure is needed to make this happen and to provide the funding. So I looked at eight, at nine uh, individual disasters last year. Uh, a couple of them are relevant to the monsoon area. Uh, and the darkness of the green shading on this image uh, shows the uh, strength of the warning system. Uh, so in the case of the tropical storm in Indonesia, uh, the tropical storm still hadn't formed. The exact location of the rain bands was very uncertain uh, in the forecasts. And that's all the forecasts around the world. I'm not talking here about just local ones. Um, the hazard was actually a uh, flash flood and mudslide, which is very difficult to forecast. Uh, but even the possibility of those uh, things happening was poorly communicated. Uh, so the chain uh, performed badly uh, for a number of reasons, some of them inherent in the weather that was uh, experienced and uh, lessons need to be learned and indeed have been learned about how that can be done better. In the case of the Henan floods in China, uh, again, it was a rainstorm. In general terms, it was well predicted, but the exact intensity uh, was uh, difficult to capture. The models disagreed. Um, again, uh, the communication was patchy. Some people were aware of what was coming, but others clearly weren't and some important protective measures uh, were not taken when they could have been. But you'll see that uh, there were also weaknesses in uh, storms that occurred in uh, Germany and in uh, North America. So there are weaknesses in all the cases that I studied and uh, lessons to be learned uh, 
for, for everyone. So what, what are some of those lessons? Well, first of all, uh, going back to the purpose of a warning, a warning needs to mobilize people to take action. And if people are going to take action when they're asked to, then there should be no surprises. They should know it's coming before it comes. And that's not just in the weather, uh, but in its consequences and in the responses that will be expected of people. And those responses will be different for different people. So some with specific vulnerabilities will need to take different actions and may need to take them earlier, uh, particularly people who are frail or disabled. Uh, it may take much longer for them to reach safety. And to achieve this, our warnings must be delivered through trusted channels. They must reach the people who are at risk and they must be understood by people at risk. And they need to provide advice to people on what to do and why they should take those actions. But our forecast, in order to do that, our forecasting systems must deliver models that, are, that produce unbiased probability distributions of extremes. Extremes are often low probability, at least in the longer range forecasts. But if we know that the model has an unbiased probability distribution, we can be confident in providing advice. The initial conditions for our forecasts need to capture the ingredients for an extreme event, which are often a combination of unusual ingredients. Our ensemble prediction systems need to reliably identify the range of uncertainty. We need diagnostic tools for communication of low probability, high impact events. So uh, when the probability of uh, a, a tropical cyclone is only 10%, and yet if it hits you, it's going to wipe out your town, how do you communicate that? How do you get people to take appropriate action? And then uh, we need to be able to predict the impact of these hazards. Uh, and that means, and that includes the impact on those with specific vulnerabilities. And finally, we need to measure. We need to measure the performance of our warning system. We need to know if people responded to what we told them. We need to know if those responses saved lives and whether they saved disruption to essential services, whether they enabled the protection of properties, because those benefits are what uh, lead to investment in better warning systems. So thank you for your attention. I draw your attention to the High Impact Weather book, which is due to be published uh, next month, uh, called Towards the Perfect Weather Warning, and also to our Twitter, Facebook, and, and website, uh, which you're very welcome to visit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, very nice talk. And uh, I'm looking forward to this new um, book. Yeah. OK, uh, any questions? No questions? Yeah, I think there are no questions. I understand the There any questions? Let me proceed. I don't yeah, see any. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there is no question for in the chat box. If, if directly, if anybody want to ask, they can ask. Okay, so I think there is no question. So let us thank the speaker. And uh, so let us thank the chair, Dr. Yali, and uh, for conducting this very nicely. Actually, there's some technical issue, but uh, yes, it is just uh, 10 to 15 minutes behind the schedule, but it happens, uh, but it is scientific contents are very nice. 
so thank you very much sir uh, and uh, all speakers and also the chair thank you thank you thank you okay yeah if you want to summarize anything uh, yeah uh, dr yali oh um yeah, it's, just... uh, it's very late here <laughs> in okay, it's yeah. almost yeah so uh okay i'd like to uh, thank uh imd again for organizing this wonderful iwm uh, seven <laughs> meeting so mm, thanks and um, uh, see you again <laughs> yeah sure thank yeah. you see you again for to uh, tomorrow again with different session thank you <laughs> okay bye-bye Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Bye.